members of committee. Uh, seeing that uh, Councillor Coleman may or may not be here this evening. So far, Councillor Simons is not here, and uh, Mr. Boma will not be here. <laughs> That's right. Um, we have an agenda in front of us. Attendance has been taken. Could we have approval of the agenda, please? Yes. Councillor Miller and, and Mayor Eddy. Uh, anybody like to add anything to the agenda? Seeing not, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, declare pecuniary interest at the, at the appropriate time, please. Uh, delegations, petitions, and presentations. Uh, 4A, Mr. Derek Richmond, Canadian Union of Postal Workers, expanding postal service in Brant. Please come up to the podium, sir. It's on? Okay. Good evening, members of Council. My name is Derek Richard, and I'm the Ontario Region Coordinator for the Canadian Union of Postal Workers. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to Council on expanding service and protecting public post offices. On December 2013, the government announced a five-point plan which included the elimination of door-to-door -door delivery to over 850,000 homes um, lost to this service between January 2014 and October 2015. Part of this five-point plan included the closing of some rural post offices and additional service cuts, including centralized mail sortation. Over 600 municipalities passed resolutions against the five-point plan. When the Liberal government won the federal election and imposed the, mo and imposed the moratorium to stop CMBs, the government also conducted a review of Canada Post by the Standing Committee on Government Operations. The committee held hearings in 22 communities. They heard from municipal governments, businesses, stakeholders, and community groups. The OGGO committee created the Way Forward Report on the Future of Canada Post with over 45 recommendations to improve service. A summary of these recommendations are included in your package. I would like to draw to your attention to a few that focus on service expansion. Recommendation 20, Canada Post review the impact of efficiency of delivery before implementing strategies such as local processing for centralizing process, processing. Recommendation 29, examine ways to improve more services and meet the service level commitments in all types of communities using its existing retail network. Recommendation 39, Canada Post explore lo location specific opportunities for the post office to act as community hubs and respond to the local needs of its surrounding community. Recommendation 36, Canada Post preserves post offices along with associated moratorium on the closer, closure of the rural post offices. I would like to expand on recommendation 39, which is to explore using Canada Post as a community hub. The Canadian Union postal workers embarked on a campaign on service expansion, which, is not, which not only includes the, the post office for a community hub, but also includes a postal bank. As we are all aware, banks are closing across rural Canada, leaving rural Canadians a lack of banking services and a bank at the, a bank at the post office would meet the needs of rural Canadians. We would also like Canada Post to provide broadband internet to rural Canadians, rural Canadians and become an internet provider. On January 4, 24, 2018, the federal government announced its vision for the renewal of Canada Post the government did announce it was ending its plan to convert CMBs, but left 850,000 Canadians without door-to-door. -door. To this date, over 900 municipalities were submitted to the federal government on service expansion, postal banking, and the federal government listened. Minister Quattro announced that Canada Post expands service and look into innovative ways other countries have expanded service. Although the minister was vague on this, we think we could, could include community hubs, and postal banking, additional services for seniors, like a senior check-in program, and greening the post office. The minister also recommended profits from these initiatives to be reinvested into expansion service for Canadians. This could mean that the 850,000 Canadians could have their home mail reinstated. Many innovative and forward-thinking ideas have been put forward in this report. This will enhance our na nation's infrastructure, social communities, and strengthen economic viability of rural communities. But we still need municipalities like the County of Brant 
to continue to put pressure on the federal government to ensure rural municipalities receive the service from the post office they deserve. On behalf of the Canadian Union of Postal Workers, we would like to thank the County of Brant, and we'd also like them to endorse the letter of support to retain enhanced and expand postal service. Thank you for your time and support, and I'm willing to take any questions or concerns you might have. Thank you, Mr. Richmond. Any uh, questions for Mr. Richmond? Councillor Miller, then Councillor Gatward, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. A couple of questions for you, too, uh, Mr. Richmond. Um, uh, how long have you guys been at this? Uh, well, I would say about 2013 when the five point plan started coming down. Okay, so it's not a conservative versus liberal thing. They're all, they're both ignoring you. It's, yeah, it's, it's bipartisan. Okay. We're, the, the, um, where do you see, uh, the, like, what do you see as the main ops opposition to this? Do you get, do you got people working on the somewhere in the background against this, these ideas? Like, you seem to have a lot of support already. What what's what, what do you see as the main obstacle, or, or other than the politicians? What, why are they not endorsing this? Uh, we're not sure about the postal banking. I know the the big banks are lobbying against postal banking, um, but we all know that rural communities are losing their banks. And we feel this is an opportunity. So I, I think they're, they're, they're being lobbied more. Big banks are lobbying more to not have it than to have it. Okay, and, and you say that, and we're watching it unfold before our eyes. I mean, next month in, in, out in one of our towns, Burford, they're closing the, the TD branch, mm -hmm. and right beside it is the post office. Mm -hmm. And they're cutting the hours of the post office. So. It makes sense, but yeah. I mean, well, we shouldn't be cutting that. And this is one thing in, in the in the that we're trying to service attention. We're trying to expand the post office and, and have it open longer. Um, community hubs um, um, for the people for come and go. We want it open more. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So these. Um, Postal banks would be operated as a for-profit, the same as any other current private bank? Mm -hmm. That's correct, yes. So then Canada Post, as a crown corporation, would be competing against private banks? I wouldn't say competing, because we're going to be going into rural communities where banks have left. And. And that's the only place, um, because is that going to be um, a lo money losing proposition because the banks have left for that reason in the first place? Uh, we feel there's a need for banking because there's a lot of, uh, like I said, in rural communities, they don't have access to broadband internet. They can't do internet banking. There's a lot of elderly folks um, that don't do internet banking, even if they do have broadband internet, but they use the post office. They come into town and they use the post office. And I think this is an opportunity that if they're coming to use the post office, pick up their mail, they can do their banking at the same time. And I agree about the internet because I have lousy service where I live. <laughs> but, um, there's some certainly interesting ideas in your proposal, and I'm sure rural Canadians appreciate what you're trying to do. So thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Councillor Reed, please. Well, <clears throat> I find this a little bit hard to understand. You're representing the union, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. And why would the union want management to get into something else? because about every five years, the post office has gone on strike. And my bank is gonna, if I'm banking with you, my bank's gonna be on strike? I'm afraid not, sir. Okay, so I'll give you a few things on that. Um, we haven't been on strike in 2004 was the last time we were on strike. But the threat is there. The threat is there sometimes, yes. But we also like to notice that if we do open a postal bank, um, there would be provisions in place that during a labor dispute that it would not be disrupted. I believe it when I see it. Any other questions for Mr. Richmond? Mayor Eddy, please. Well, we're aware that we are losing postal services. We have in Glen Morris. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the replacement was not in the county of Brent, it was in Ayer. Very busy one, I might say, a very convenient 
post office about anything, uh, apparently. But we are losing services, plus nothing to do with you. We're losing banks as well. And um, it's going to continue. I don't prophesy, but I'm concerned it will continue. So thank you for coming forward with your proposal. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Richmond. I appreciate it. Point of your question. Um, how does this work now? Are you guys going to vote on the resolution submitted in front of us today or now, or does that come into the next meeting? I, I, I'm just trying to ask for to follow the procedure. It will be up to committee uh, after we're finished uh, 4E to decide what we're going to do. Okay, so stick around for a while. You can if you'd like, yep. sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you again, sir. Uh, moving along to 4B, Mr. George Mashevsky. Tulsa Canada and Zoller Canada requesting to change the street names on two sides of company. Please proceed, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Um, I'm just going to go over a quick uh, presentation of who we are and what we're doing. Uh, some of the, the council members were at the grand opening we had last year. Um, so I just want to go over the history of Zoller. Zoller uh, Pump Company started in 1939 down in Louisville, Kentucky. It's a uh, if you see that small little building in the middle there, that was the original building. Um, and you can see how well it's expanded. They went from selling five pumps a year to having well over 15 million pumps across the United States and Canada. Uh, Telsar, which is the name on the, on the building we currently uh, occupy, uh, was started in 1981 in Kitchener. Um, it took over in 2016. Uh, part of the expansion plans was to uh, relocate it. Uh, they preferred to stay in Kitchener due to the labor force. But the uh, opportunity came to, to pick up a really good building in Brant. Uh, so we did some homework and it was the best place for us to, relo uh, to relocate to. Um, so if you look at the history of the two companies, Zoller has been in business for seven, nine years. It's very strong financially. It's not going to go anywhere. Telstar has been serving customers in this area for 36 years. And as long as I'm there, I don't plan on going anywhere. I'm still too young to retire. So together we've been uh, 115 years of, uh, of combined business. So when you look at Zoller, so again, I just want to point out that we're not a small company. Zoller Corporation is out of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, they own Zoller Pump Company, Engineer Pump, uh, which is a Zoller brand, Zoller Taiwan, where we actually manufacture uh, pumps, uh, Claris, uh, Flint & Walling, which is one year older than Canada itself, uh, and they're out in uh, Kendallville, Indiana, Wolf Pumps in Abernathy, Texas, uh, again, Telsar is in Brent County, so is Zoller Canada, and we also have Zoller Mexico and Zoller China. So as far as commitment goes, I think last year we, we proved our commitment. We purchased the old FlowServe building. Uh, we did some extensive uh, renovations in there, and again, we were quite happy to have a, a, quite a few of the councillors there at the grand opening. So why did we move to Brent? Well, because it's menace, it's menace to, uh, to the highways. It's uh, central to Detroit, Buffalo, Toronto. We have access to uh, a multitude of transportation methods. But again, we did our homework. Uh, so we pinpointed where we were going to purchase the building. We went half an hour each way to see what kind of uh, labor force was available. And Brant County and, and in that location was just a perfect uh, place for us to move to. So Brant County support. Uh, we purchased the property in December of 2016. Uh, we didn't start planning until 2017 because of the way the, the uh, purchase went and we did not have a plan for the building until February. So the project was, well actually it wasn't close to half a million dollars, it was almost $800,000 by the time we put in all the new lighting in, into the building. So the project timeline I was given was 8 to 10 months before we could move in and that's just following your standard procedures in, in, uh, in the major cities or anywhere else in the that you would go through a project like this. So the PO was issued to the contractor in January 22nd for the demo, and we issued a PO February 17th for the remodel. Again, the quote, eight, the quote was eight to 10 months, and I had to be out of the kitchen area before April 1st. So we moved in on April 1st. So how does such magic happen? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, support from the county uh, was a lot more than anybody could ever expect. And that went everything from having inspectors come in to inspect the building to give us the permits, 
to uh, our final occupancy ins inspection. And again, we weren't 100% ready, but the, the county cooperated with us and we were able to move in uh, April 1st. So we did something that was remarkable and unbelievable. Even the people that actually did it, um, all the contractors uh, told me that what we did was almost pretty much impossible and it wouldn't have been possible without the support of uh, Brent County. And I, I would tell that to anybody that's looking to uh, move their company here. So what have we done since April 2017? Well, we've invested close to a million dollars in property and that's upgrades uh, and electrical. <clears throat> we invested another half a million dollars in new enclosure manufacturing, which we had purchased outsourced prior to, and now we have that internal capability. And in April of this year, I purchased a company outside of Toronto that manufactures extension cords and uh, wire harnesses. And we are relocating that into uh, our facility in Brent, and that will add another 25 jobs to the area. So since our move in 2017 to July 2018, we will have increased our labor, our employees from 50 to uh, close to 100, if not more. So we are creating uh, a lot of opportunity. Our focus on growth and business in the community, export growth. Uh, we started exporting in, into the United States last year, and we're currently working with some of the government agencies to support uh, exporting into Brazil. Productivity enhancements. Uh, we've invested heavily in new equipment, training, um, a lot of processing that we didn't have before to try to keep customers from buying offshore. Innovation, we created an R&D team last year, which consists of five full-time employees, and that is for PCB uh, design and manufacturing, uh, and all new kind of technologies for uh, potable water and wastewater control systems. Our employees, anybody that's come through there will tell you they're quite happy being there, satisfied with their work, and uh, the opportunity for internal growth is quite big. We have gone through two receptionists who started as a receptionist and now are working either in accounting or uh, customer service. Uh, Ontario Focus, most of our suppliers are in Ontario, and anything that we used to purchase from the United States or offshore, we currently buy uh, within the province. Environmental, uh, we support that through the nature of our products. We do control water and wastewater uh, treatment uh, facilities, and our green initiatives such as the lighting that we uh, invest in the building, and also all the recycling that uh, we do. Our growth strategies is provide quality products on time at the right price while working with foreign agencies to export our products globally. And we have uh, seen quite a bit of success there. So again, my request is to change the name of the two streets. So mm -hmm. if you look at the bottom there, or wherever it says Worthington, I would like to change that to uh, Tulsar Drive instead of Worthington Drive. And Tower Road has nobody on there right now, so I'd like to change that to Zoller Road. And on the left-hand side of the building, we will be putting up a new sign uh, that says Zoller Canada. Uh, we are renovating half the building that we had left for, um, for leasing out, but through all the acquisitions we've gone through and all the investment in equipment and internal processing, uh, we will fill that building up by the, before the end of the year. So we are renovating that, that area now, the, the offices, and uh, Zoller will get uh, their name up there. So again, this is just an overview shot of our property. You can see we're the biggest uh, property owners on that uh, street. So why am I here asking for something silly like change the names of two streets? Well, I'll give you a short story before I, I go through the slideshow, but a friend of mine actually runs the company by the Brantford Airport to manufacture street signs. So he said, hey, can I make you a sign? I said, you know what? I had another friend make me a street sign when I was like 20 years ago. I said, it's still in my garage, I don't really need it. He says, well, let me make you a street sign. I said, okay, fine. He says, so what do you want? I said, you know what? I want to make me a Tulsa Drive sign. So it's at my office for three days while I'm trying to figure out where to hang it in the, in the building. And then it hit me. The name of the street is named after my building anyway. So that's why I'm here. I know it might seem like a silly request, but I think it's uh, a worthy one. So again, the Tulsa building is uh, the old Worthington building. Yeah. Uh, the street was named after our property. Right. We are now the owners and the largest property on the street and also the largest employer in the area. And it's time for a change, which was where I came up with that little cheesy, the current of change on the grand. You can use that. Uh, and again, Brantford and Brent County are still remembered as a strong union stronghold. And a lot of companies don't want to relocate here because of it. And our street name still carries that uh, stigmatism. And I don't mean that in any kind of disrespectful way, but uh, about five or six years ago, I worked for a deep foundation company out of Hamilton. 
uh, I was tasked again to do the same kind of thing as find a property big enough and a building big enough so we can grow the business. Uh, we went through quite a few buildings here in Brantford and once I, relo I located a, a building that was suitable for us, it was just the, the union uh, atmosphere that was there that uh, deterred people from uh, relocating. So again, it's time to recognize change in the future in Tulsa and Zoller uh, in Brant County by celebrating the success in the future rather than close factories and the shutdown plants. So it's time to rebrand Brant County and this is a great way to start. And that's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Mashevsky. Any questions? Councillor Miller? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, three to the presenter. Um, Tower, Drop, Tower Road, there's no addresses there. There's, I think, according to the map, there are, what, six businesses on Worthington yeah, right there's, now? There's roughly about eight, yeah. Have you spoken to any of them? No, we're actually getting together this uh, Wednesday. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, yes, thank sure. you very much. Thank you. Good suit. Thank you. 4C, uh, Ms. Catherine Cooper and Mr. Bob Phillips, Zatia Group, Zatia Developments, proposed re redevelopment Dundas Street. Thank you very much. Ah, you got some color. Hello everyone, I'll uh, just do a quick summary while Bob's handing out those um, larger site plans. So as you're aware, Zatia has a bit of a commercial node down on Dundas Street East in the town of Paris. Currently located is the Swiss Chalet and the Harveys. Across the road is the No Frills. Um, the Zatia Development Group has also acquired the Brant County, former Brant County Power site and we'll be proceeding with some work there. Immediately adjacent, I guess, to the west of Harvey's, they also currently have four separate houses in that area. We are, we have been, um, we've entered into a confidential agreement for an international commercial use to be coming to that property. We've met with staff and we'll be proceeding with the necessary site plan agreement. The lands are zoned and designated for commercial use. As part of the overall development, we do need to take down a portion of that large wall that's on the south side of Dundas Street East. This has been discussed uh, a number of times with, with the municipality over the last few years. And in fact, there was a site plan approval in principle, um, I think about three and a half years ago, which envisioned the removal of the wall, partial removal of the wall. Now that we're moving forward with the development, we uh, will be filing our demolition permits. We have Bob Phillips here. He'll speak to the engineering component of it. The reason we're here tonight, uh, and it, it came as a joint discussion with staff, is, is we would like to proceed um, with this development in two paths. One, of course, is the planning path through site plan and working with staff, and, and, and we will be doing that and are doing that. But because of the infrastructure that has to come down, we're looking for a mechanism to move forward with that. And uh, Bob will get into a bit more detail with that, but this was a suggestion from staff that we come forward to CDC to get some direction and some approval and principle to move forward with the necessary permits to begin the infrastructure removal so that we're not waiting until all the paperwork is completed three or four or five months down the line. The Commercial use that wants to be that that is coming are hopeful to be there to be located by and open by December of this year. It's very exciting, and as soon as we have the opportunity to disclose who it is, we will. But I guarantee you, you're going to be very thrilled. I'm going to let Bob speak to the specifics of this. Um, so quickly, the two houses immediately west of the Harveys will be removed, and part of the wall, completely engineered and approved by staff. You want to touch base, Bob? Thank you, members of the committee. Uh, I handed out a sketch, which is not unlike the one that was in on your desk tonight. Uh, the only difference is I highlighted the portion of the retaining wall that they would like to remove it at this time. It's over 12 feet in height, probably close to 14. Uh, it's a cantilevered style retaining wall. 
the process that they would go is uh, to excavate in behind the wall, remove some of the pressure, and then you can basically cut it down. It varies in thickness from 12 or 16 inches up to 24 uh, down near its base. So it's a pretty substantial uh, reinforced concrete wall. We did a report probably three and a half years ago. Uh, it's fairly, fairly easy to demolish. It's got to be saw cut in pieces and removed. And that can all be done from the, the back side of it. Uh, all that I think will be required is hoarding along the street. It will not require any uh, lane closures in that area. Um, we are suggesting that this can be done through a public works permit process uh, where bonding and, and insurance and, and those types of things may also require a demolition permit through the, the building department. Basically, the end is to take it down below grade uh, for the entire blue portion that I highlighted on the plan. <laughs> Uh, so that'll be gone and you'll have a standard uh, street boulevard in that location. And then it's going to be saw cut on a taper because we're sort of ending the, the uh, removal at, at one of those stairs that is there. And it'll be a saw cut on an angle to make it look uh, reasonable for the time being. I think that's all I can say right now. And if there's any questions, I'd be happy to. And I'm sure Kathy will too. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Uh, questions, Councillor Miller, then Councillor Pierce, then Councillor Powell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I threw you to the presenters. Um, <clears throat> this retaining wall, what's the purpose of it other than to hold back all that earth that you're going to move? <laughs> that's, that's the entire that's, purpose. That's the entire. Yeah. So it helps, um, I'm going to guess, structurally for the houses that are there now, which you'll be removing, yes? They'll be removed. Okay. Yeah. Basically, the slope back up to the higher ground will be at a three to one slope, which is inherently stable. And what about drainage? Will that be affected much in this area? Would you? No, basically any drainage will be def uh, uh, directed sort of into the development where the proper controls can be put in place there. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Um, I just want to confirm here, I think I can see it from the diagram, but you're not talking an additional entrance, it's just going to be the one that is there now, correct? That's correct. Okay, that's good. Now, so once you're, once that's all out of there and it's all opened up, mm -hmm. obviously there's got to be some sort of retaining wall to the west side of it. How high are you thinking that that's probably going to be? Along the west side, the preliminary stuff we've done says we can eliminate any retaining walls. Right now, along the west side of the Harveys, there's probably a six foot retaining wall. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we're gonna need that because I think we have sufficient land area that we can just uh, taper the grade off with a three to one slope. Glad to hear that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chairman and Mr. Phillips. Will there be changes in Fair Lane in terms of elevation with the setter? No. It stays just the way it is now? Yes. Okay. It should be noted as well, with the removal of this wall, the county's going to gain between 15 to 20 and down to eventually about 12 extra feet on the road alone. <coughs> so your, your, and your siding is going to be significantly improved, even coming up parkings, because that, that there's a large portion of that I bank. I think what Kathy's trying to say with the removal of this retaining wall, the most westerly entrance adjacent to Harvey's is going to be opened up and it'll actually uh, have better visibility lines for the traffic in that location because you're going to lower the grade to the west of that entrance. Councillor Chambers, please. I'm just looking at the diagram, uh, Mr. Chairman, and, and through you. Uh, uh, the house, the existing house to the uh, south of the property are they happy about this it's can it's owned and controlled by the Zatia group as well so that that's owned as, as well then yes that's all any other questions mayor Eddie and then councillor Wheat. well we were aware that the wall would be disappearing at some time in the future but we certainly weren't uh, aware when uh, the ex so that you're presenting to this 
to us for information, opportunity to ask questions so we be conversant with what the proposal is. But the proposal itself will subsequently be submitted to our planning department. Is that correct? That's correct. The reason we're here tonight yes. is to get endorsement from this committee for us to allow to move forward to remove the infrastructure yes. in conjunction with filing our site plan application. Because the process is going to take so long. Because the houses have to come down the excavation and then the removal of the wall. We would like to proceed with that at the same time as filing as our site plan registration. Uh, so we're looking for some type of direction to staff for us to proceed with a roads permit and possibly a demolition permit for the removal of the infrastructure. And of course, nothing's going to happen. We're not going to. We can do our demolition permits, but we're not going to be able to proceed with construction until we register our site plan agreement. But we'd like to start with the infrastructure stuff at the same time as we're doing all of this. Was there a consideration, or that hasn't been discussed yet, the possibility, or indeed, the need of widening Dundas Street. Uh, there is a traffic study <laughs> done now um, by another interested developer in the area. And that traffic study will be oh. looking at considerations Thank of the you. intersection of Curtis and Dundas. It will also look at, for example, the realignment of Dundas Street with the bridge and that entire intersection area. I think obviously it's something that needs to be done. So that that is moving forward. It's not a requirement nor part of this particular project. Thank you. But the overall is getting looked at now. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Gatward, please. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. I believe you did say that if we remove the wall, which must be on county road allowance, and push the dirt back that we would gain 12 feet, did you say? Uh, in that location, I think as much as 15 feet. I mean, you, you already own it, but it's going to be usable, I guess is the word, for eventual realignment of, of Dundas Street. But as Bob was uh, talking about, it's, it just, it's going to improve your, your visibility and sighting in the area, because that large piece of infrastructure is not going to be there, a portion of it. And as Bob was indicating, the work to be done, it would be come in, take the houses down, excavate the soil, remove portions, six or seven foot portions of the wall at a time. Nothing would affect Dundas Street, none of the lanes are going to shut down, nothing's going to affect Fairlane because the excavation and removal of material will go in through the commercial property through in behind Harvey's and Swiss. So it's it's going to have, a, we're going to have as very little impact as possible to the area. It will not affect Fairlane or the intersection of Curtis. And can you refresh my memory? Is there, where is the sidewalk? Sidewalk's right here, right, right. right in front of it. Like the, these are the cement stairs. The sidewalk butts right up to the wall. So the sidewalk will be left untouched? Correct. Or? And there would be a requirement, obviously, through the process that if there's any damage done, that we would be required to restore it. As I mentioned, in order, to, in order to do the work on the retaining wall, you're going to have to provide hoarding on the street side of the wall. Uh, that will close that sidewalk for a period of time during the wall's removal, but uh, when it's all said and done, it'll it'll be restored. I thank you. Councillor Wheat, please. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to the presenter. Have you purchased all the houses on the north side of Fair Lane? between Fair Lane and the retaining wall? No, um, all three, pardon me, the last house that is on the corner of Curtis has not been acquired. Are you attempting to acquire it? Has, have attempted several times. She, they are not interested. I believe another developer in the area uh, hmm. may be approaching them. But uh, it's not something that, that we require, nor at this point are interested in. Uh, uh, certainly negotiations we try several times. I asked that when I think back to five minutes ago when Councillor Chambers had a question about is everybody happy there and I think back three and a half years ago and there was a lot of disgruntled neighbors and that's back in the day when Councillor Chambers was the chair of this committee <laughs> and I can remember a couple of very heated uh, meetings here. 
That particular landowner did have some concerns. As you recall, we went through a very public process under the Planning Act. Lands were redesignated and rezoned. She had a right of appeal. She did not. She did not pursue that. This particular development will have no impact on that particular property. It does not about that property at all. There is one house that will be remaining between that property and the new development, and that one is owned by the City of Belmont. That owner is not the disgruntled neighbor that was here three and a half years ago. Thank you. Any other questions, concerns? Yes. Councillor Chambers, please. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. I, I just, I, I'm a little bit confused on the process. You're here presenting this, and we're here listening to this. Yeah. Who isn't here and isn't being heard is our staff, who have a lot more expertise on this than certainly I do. And I'm just wondering, in terms of process, would it not have been uh, convenient, perhaps, it's not the right word, but to present this to staff and then have a staff <laughs> report to us? And you, you see what I'm, what I'm, yes. it seems backwards to me is what I'm saying. I'm wondering so why. We met with staff on site last week. Uh, there was um, four members of staff, Mike Tout. Uh, anyway, there was a number of staff members that were there. County Engineer, Mike Tout, um, Rob Trotter, Doug Lyons, Joe Cahoon, myself, and the landowners. And we walked the entire site, explained exactly what was happening, and it was a recommendation of staff that this is what we do. That we come, actually, I, I thought maybe we'd come to Roads Committee. It was suggested we come to CDC because more members of council would be here. Um, and it was to determine the mechanism of how we can move forward with the removal of the infrastructure, because it's not really a, we weren't quite sure of the permit process, and I think through the discussions of your staff and with the engineers that it would be a roads permit and possibly a demolition permit under the building code, so we can move forward with that. And of course the planning process is, is moving forward as well. Councilor Gatward, please. Uh, thank you, so staff recommended this and um, did they request an engineered grading plan for the removal of the wall and what the grades and everything would look like when when the project is It'll complete so I'm, that it can be done according to plan I, i'm not sure that that's the case uh, but certainly as part of the development plans a grading plan will be prepared um, to indicate the final approach. They've asked for some cross sections through through the wall, both before and after. Um, and probably an update to my uh, st structural report that was prepared like three years ago. So great plan, it, it is being done as part of the requirements anyways, and certainly could be available prior to. Um, and I think what we talked about, so it will be a, a, a roads permit, we enter into an agreement, with the municipality, and by the way, we're paying full cost of removal of the infrastructure. We're not asking for any cost sharing. Um, both the, bond, the, the insurance, the bonds, provide the necessary, whatever the necessary documents are for the for the agreement itself, and then apply for the <coughs> permits. And we weren't quite sure. We'd have to find out from Andre whether or not a demolition permit is required. Under the that was that was it. So you're looking for approval tonight of an agreement to move forward with this plan. Yeah, like we, what we're looking for is, I guess, a directive to staff to move forward with entering into an agreement and the necessary permits, uh, us filing the necessary permits through the county for the removal of the infrastructure, doing it in conjunction with the site plan registration. Thank you. Any other questions, concerns? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next up, 4D, public hearing request by the Noise Bylaw Exemption South Brant Legion. Uh, there is a staff report, C staff report CD18-45. Any comments to this? Okay. Yeah, it's a hearing, so. Committee have any questions? Seeing none, I'll open it to a public hearing. Anyone in the public like to ask any questions for a first time? 
I'll ask again for a second time any questions or concerns. And I'll ask a third time. Seeing none, this portion of the public meeting is closed. And we'll be dealing with this, like I said, at CD 18-45. Uh, we'll move on to 4E, public hearing request noise by law. Shushank, July 20th to 22nd, 2018, uh, CD 1846. Any questions or concerns regarding this from the committee? Councillor Gatward, please. Thank you. Um, I noted um, it's a request till 3 a.m. And I just thought uh, we could or wait, it's been reduced, I guess, to 2 a.m. Because I read. Yes, we'll uphold that. Thank you. No, but I, I, I want if there, if the um, applicant is here, I would like them to explain why they have to go so late. Like. That's correct. Yes. But the, um, since it's a public hearing, cannot Shesh Incorporated also appear at the podium? I believe they can. Can they? Yes, they can if committee wishes them to come up to the podium. Does committee need to see them up the, at the podium? They speak to it with Mr. Chair when you open it to the public for comments. Okay. Any more questions by the committee? Seeing none, I'll open it up to the public hearing portion. Anyone wishing to speak to this or questions regarding this item? Yes, please come up to the podium. State your name and address, please. Hello, my name is Becky Katz, and I am a Hamilton, Ontario resident. My address is 164 McNabb Street North. And I'm part of Shush, Inc. And I'm going to explain why um, we've applied for the noise exemption. So we're a not-for-profit organization from based out of Hamilton. This will be our third year in Paris at the fairgrounds. Last year, we came to town council to apply for a noise exemption until 2 a.m. and it passed um, with no questions asked. And this year was a little different. We uh, tried to extend it till three just to be safe for our timeline because we have roughly 25 um, different performers playing throughout the weekend. And so just to have the wiggle room, we wanted to uh, play it safe, but it was presented to us that there were some disgruntled neighbors about this application and so uh, out of respect we've revised it to only be until 11 p.m. outdoors and then to take uh, the, the nighttime concert indoors until 2 a.m. Any other questions? Thank you very much. public hearing portion if there's anybody who would like to come up and ask any questions regarding this and a third time seeing none this portion of the public hearing is closed members of the committee will start back with uh, item a how would the committee like to deal with this Councilor Miller please well <laughs> we'll see um, I'll, I'll move that uh, we uh, support the uh, letter as written by uh, the Canadian Union of Postal Workers and that uh, we send it off to the appropriate uh, people listed. You have a Seeking seconder? A seconder. Councillor Powell, anyone wishing to speak to this? Councillor Miller, please. No, uh, as, um, as I said during the delegation's presentation, um, 
we are facing this in the county, uh, certainly in Burford. Uh, and um, we know that the Postal Union, or sorry, Canada Post is moving to close the, uh, the Canada Post offices or reduce their hours. Um, and at the same time, the banks are doing the same thing. And that is really, it's going to hurt other businesses, obviously, in those communities. So um, I support it, and anybody that uh, is willing to uh, take on the big banks, uh, they got my vote. Thank you. There's a motion on the floor. Any questions to the motion? If not, all in favor? Opposed? The motion is carried. Item 4B, how would committee like to deal with this? Councilor Gatward, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would move that we refer the request um, to staff for a recommendation to come forward so that they can double check um, with the um, City of Brantford so that there's no um, duplication of names. Seeking a seconder. Anyone have any questions, concerns regarding this? Councillor Pierce. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, if I could, um, I'm not sure if we're able to do it or not, but I was, uh, I was willing to put forth the motion to approve this. So is it possible to do a friendly amendment on this that if there is no duplication of names that we can proceed and, and approve this? Uh, uh, just referred to... Um, Mr. Bradley, and he suggests that we refer this to staff to deal with this, to look at any other names in the area and so on. Um, it's policy, I believe, to do it that way. So we can refer this to staff to come back with the changes. Councillor Gatward? Yes, and I would agree with that, Mr. Chair, because on Worthington Drive, there are several businesses, and to ask them to change their address is very... Um, cumbersome for them and difficult and costly. So my thinking was that Tower Road would be perhaps the best choice to change to Tulsa Road, but staff can come back with a report to committee. Any other questions? There's a motion on the floor. All in favor to refer so this. So what is the motion then that we are actually dealing with in Madam view clerk? of the fact that you have stated it's changed? I've asked the clerk if she could. Thank you. The motion is to, ref to refer the request to change the street names um, to staff for a report and recommendation. Mayor Eddie? I agree with that because we don't know. Uh, we want to be certain that the changes that we're prepared to make and approve uh, are applicable and uh, fit. So thank you, thank Your Worship. You. Councillor Wheat, please. A few years back when we had to change the names because we had duplications, that's how it was done. It was referred to staff, staff gave a report, we either endorsed it or turned it down, and that's the way to do it. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? If not, I'm gonna put the question, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, 4C. Uh, members of committee, I'd like to ask Mr. Bradley to give us a little bit of information on this, if he would, please, if that's okay with committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I think the question was asked what during the delegation is, uh, is, 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 is what, what staff's position on this. So the, the normal process on this is that they would apply for site plan, uh, uh, go through the site plan application and any alteration to existing municipal infrastructure would be addressed through that application and conditions would be put in the site plan approval requiring them to maybe go through other permits such as a public works permit in this case to alter municipal infrastructure. I think in this case the, uh, the, the delegation is asking to run those concurrently. They'd like to alter the municipal infrastructure as soon as they can and then and, and concurrently make their site plan application. And this, is, this is abnormal. And, uh, and so, so our, our recommendation to them is that they should be seeking or uh, pr presenting their case to committee and then committee will direct us to either entertain their, their thought about, about running this 
these two things concurrently or, or not, at which point they would submit, to site, uh, to make, submit a site plan application and go through that process and it would, uh, it would, it would go through its natural process. So hopefully that's clear uh, to, to everyone. So that, that I believe is, is the request and our position is this is abnormal and, uh, and so we would, we would hesitate to, uh, to, to agree to it and start bringing these, these kind of separate processes forward um, you know, without, without some, at least some direction from committees. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. Was, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Bradley pertaining to this? Councillor Goutworth and Councillor Miller, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to um, CAO Bradley. And maybe I missed this in the presentation. Is the reason for this um, that the developer has um, someone who's interested in a timely build on the site where the work is being done? Yes. Through you, Mr. Chair, I can't speak for the developer. I think that was conveyed in their presentation that they are, they are, that they have some, some haste in this uh, to move this along, so. Councillor Miller. If we, um, through Mr. Chair to Mr. Bradley, if we approve in principle this, um, it goes to council for final decision. Would we be able to get, do you feel, sufficient staff feedback on, on that proposal? If that makes sense. No. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, you're saying if you approve it in principle. If we support no. this in principle tonight. No. no. It would go to council, obviously, for, for final approval. Um, would, would staff have time to, to review to review this uh, proposition, I guess, before council or in time for council, in case I had any other further information well, came forward. I'm just through you, Mr. Chair. If, if, the, if you, through you, Mr. Chair, if, if, if the question is, can we bring back a, a, a more fulsome, detailed analysis of what the process would look like by council? I think we could do that. Uh, we could we could put a, a, a report forward in the council agenda outlining and outlining some additional details on what this would look like. But. Okay, Councillor Wheat. This uh, thank you. This is kind of going to be a question to you, Mr. Chair. I don't see a recommendation in front of me to vote on, so somebody's going to have to make a recommendation mm -hmm. before I can decide. But right. somebody's got to make a recommendation for me to turn down. Thank you. Councillor Pierce, then Councillor Chambers. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. A couple of things. First of all, to answer Councillor uh, answer Councilor Gatward, uh, she the, the when they were putting their um, delegation there, they had stated that whomever it is would like to be in by December. So it is they, it is kind of uh, they want to make make haste in doing this. Now the way I'm reading this is regardless of whether we approve this <laughs> tonight to yes. go forward. There's still certain steps that have to be done in order for them to do this. So whether we do it now or we say, no, let's get everything in order here and then we're going to do this and we're going to do this. I'm confident that they're going to have to follow policies and procedures, whether we do it now or later. There is something in their, in the, in their record. It's the recommendation they have in here is to approve in principle the proposed redevelopment and allow the removal of a portion of the wall on the south side of Dundas Street. I'd be more than willing to put forth a recommendation that we go forward and allow them to run this concurrently. As I say, I feel confident that they are going to have to do all the steps involved, whether it's now, one at a time, or whatever, but this would allow two things. Anybody that has come out of that, that little Harvey's Plaza there and, yeah. and tried to pull out of there, to me, anything we can do in the short term to reduce the blockage of sight lines there is going to be an advantage to everybody. So I think this is going to be, I think it's going to be great and I'd be more than willing to put forth a recommendation that we, uh, we support this. I'm just looking for a seconder. Are you seconding, Councillor? Yeah, if, if his motion. If his motion is that we direct staff to develop an agreement regarding the work on the property, then yes, I'll second it. Okay, Councilor Chambers. Uh, Mr. Chairman, be before you place that motion, I I'm wondering if uh, the mover and seconder would just hold off for a second <laughs> to allow me to 
ask a question perhaps. And my question is through you, Mr. Chairman, to staff. Could staff within the next 10 or 15 minutes craft a resolution that we can consider that would move this forward, recognizing that there's support for the uh, process. And the recommendation that staff would make would enable staff to work with the developer to ensure that this moves forward. So that's my question. Can staff do that within the next 10 or 15 minutes? Mr. Bradley? Certainly, Mr. Chair. I actually, I think I could probably present that recommendation right now. It would be staff be directed to develop a process that would allow concurrently uh, the, uh, the, the required work on the retaining wall uh, along with the uh, site plan approval process, something along those lines. I, I think that's what Councillor Pierce meant to say, and that's what Councillor Gatwood meant to second, and I would be very supportive of that resolution. Once again, Councillor Chambers is correct. <laughs> And I said everything except the site plan part, so I would accept that as a friendly amendment to our motion. Any questions regarding the change on the uh, motion? May we have it repeated, please? Certainly. The Madam Clerk? Wording. Yes, sir. That staff be directed to develop a process that would allow concurrently the required work on the retaining wall along with the site plan approval process. Is that okay, Your Worship? Thank you. Any other questions? We have a motion on the floor. All in favor? Opposed? That is carried. 4D, the public hearing request noise by law, South Brant Legion. How would we like to handle that? Councillor Miller, please, and then Councillor Gatward. Well, I'll just, uh, I'll move fours D and E to their respective uh, reports. Okay. Councillor Pierce, second. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. Moving along, uh, adoption of the minutes from the previous meeting. <laughs> Councillor Pierce, seconder. Councillor Miller, any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, business arising from the minutes. Seeing none. Uh, consent items 7A to be approved. Consent items to be approved. Uh, noise exemption, South Brant Legion. Councillor Gatward makes a motion to approve. Councillor Pierce seconds. Any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, 7A2, CD1852, Development and Engineering Standards Water and Wastewater Usage Rate Amendment to Residential Areas. So moved. Seconder? Mayor Eddy. Any questions, concerns? Got Councillor Gatward and then Councillor Powell. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. Through you to staff, originally we started out, was it over 400 a day and then we've been reducing it steadily since? Is, can someone give me the history on that, please? Uh, Mr. Cunningham? Mr. Cunningham, could you address that, please, sir? Oh, lights. And there was light. <laughs> Yes, when we amalgamated, we didn't have the historical uh, data to, uh, available to us. So we, we started at the MOE maximum, which was 450 yeah. liters per capita per day. And over time, uh, we were uh, recording and documenting the, the water usage and wastewater usage. And back in, I think it was 2012, we reduced it to uh, 350 liters per capita per day. Uh, if you recall, when St. George came online for the, for the water, it was on a, a flat rate. And uh, once they started getting the billing that the reg other people were getting, uh, we noticed that there was a change in the water usage. And we allowed that to... 
progress and then we uh, analyze that data and seem to fall in line with the rest of what Paris was, was using and stuff. So we have from 2009 to 2016 or 2017, we analyzed that data and we're comfortable with reducing it again to 300. We still are conservative, but uh, we, after we get more data, we can look at it again. And uh, I had a question earlier, this is kind of uh, about 300 liters per capita day. Where does it fall into with other municipalities? City of Brantford is 300. Uh, oh. the, one of the uh, anomalies is uh, City of London. They use 270, but uh, their historical data is, is very good and they go back 50, 60 years. So that's where they're, they're very comfortable with 270. Thank you very much for your help. Councillor Pierce, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, if I could. So, okay, I understand that we're reducing it back here, but it doesn't tell me in this report, so let's say I use more than that. Then what? And it is an average. If, uh, that goes over, so there are others that will use it, but if you look at the cross-section of, of um, users across the board, 300 is, there's a lot of people that use way less, 203, 200, so it does average out, and when you take a look at the, the masses, it, it, you're still comfortable at 300. Okay. Councillor Powell, please. Through you, uh, again, using averages, when we're building 800, 1,600 homes, if the average, we take the low end or the high end, that could make quite a difference to your total water consumption as we go forward, especially the next few years with the tremendous growth we're going to have in residential. And the type of residential right now looks like uh, single family homes or duplexes. Now that could change and I don't know if that changes your numbers at all. It's, it's very interesting and we are going, what we're doing is with that we are going to be hitting a major growth curve here and unprecedented for Brant County and we need to watch that. So if we are able to analyze the data two years from now and see where we're at, because the growth that we have just in the next year or two will outpace what we've done in the last five. So uh, we will be watching that as well. Uh, it's interesting because I just saw a report uh, earlier from uh, Watson Associates. We use about 2.89 people per unit when you're talking about these new units. Uh, Watson, when they're coming in, and I'm thinking uh, their, their stats canda is down to 2.5. So when you're looking at this, it ends up reducing uh, your theoretical uh, design uh, uh, criteria. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none. Oh, I'm sorry, Councillor Wheat. It's not a question, that's a comment. I'm supporting this. This, did, this didn't get developed yesterday. This has been ongoing for the past number of years, and I'd like to congratulate Don for all the work you've put into this. And I recall a developer coming forward with this request quite some time ago, and you didn't make this decision overnight. There's been a lot of work put into this report. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you, Mr. Cunningham. Uh, item uh, 73, CD1854, Tender Award, Scotland Community Center. So moved. Seconder, Councillor Pierce. Any questions or concerns? Councillor Miller, please. Quick question on this one. Um, all the HVAC, is that? Is this replacing everything that's an HVAC related in that uh, former school? Mr. Bradley? Through you, Mr. Chair, I believe it is. I believe uh, that, that this, this was a, a complete rebuild of the me mechanical. Because so. I just, I'm, I'm just wondering, because it says one AC unit, and one would think there would be more than that, but. Three, three, Mr. Chair, and I, I don't quote me on this, but I, I believe that the, the the new the one end of the building has a, has has basically central air, and the other end of the building has unit conditioners. Okay. Oh, and uh, and and so that's 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 why there's only one for the building. Okay. But don't quote me on that. I'll confirm that. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, 
1856 Legislative Updates to Human Resources Policies and Procedures. We have a mover, Councilor Pierce, Councilor Goutward. Questions or concerns? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, five, CD 1858, licensing tribunal appointments. There are uh, three appointees there. Move. Mayor Reddy moves. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Miller. Questions or concerns? C Councillor Miller. Um, I'm just, <laughs> I, I read the, uh, the bios on the three people and I was, I was quite impressed with the uh, applicants applying for this. So, very lucky to have those people in our community. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, consent items to be received. B1, 2, and 3. Councillor Pierce. Seconder. Councillor Powell. Anybody want anything pulled? Questioned? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. No committee report. Staff report. Corporate services. CD 1843. Mayor Eddy. Move. I finally, we finally live to see this happy <laughs> crap. I don't know whether I can use that word or not. Sure you can. Happy crap. <laughs> I'll allow it, sure. It's gone. This has been a struggle for a long, long time. Seconder. Councilor Miller. Questions or concerns? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Two, CD 1844, elimination of the vacant unit tax rebate program. Mover. Mayor Eddy, seconder, please. Councilor Miller, questions or concerns? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Number Three, CD 1846, no Noise Exemption, Shush, Inc. Shush. Shush. <laughs> Mover, Councilor Pierce, seconder. Councilor Chambers, questions or concerns? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, four, CD 1848, sign by law amendment. Mover, please. <clears throat> Councilor Chambers, do we have a seconder? Councilor Powell, questions or concerns? Seeing none, all in favor. Oh, Councilor Gatwer, did you have a question? Yeah, I just want to be clear. Could you put your mic on, please, Councilor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wanted to be clear about um, where it says except on a boulevard. Does that mean that they can put signs on the boulevard? Because when the delegation was here regarding this matter, I didn't think that was acceptable. I don't know if staff can um, clarify that. We're just reviewing it briefly, for quickly here. Who's, who's the staff? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bergeron. Please, thank you. We'll find out. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, reading this report, I believe it says that it. Uh, it can be erected on a boulevard. There are certain signs that are permitted to be on a boulevard, um, and they're outlined in the report. Um, the wording is going to change to um, an open house directional sign may be erected on a boulevard, except on a boulevard adjacent to a cemetery, cemitaph, or war memorial. There you go. So it says. Therefore, it'll be a prohibition. Thank you. So you wouldn't be able to on the cenotaph, no. no. Would not. Correct. Yes. Any other questions? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you, Mr. Bergeron. CD 1853, AMO Conference Delegations. Any other 
Uh, Councilor Week? It's a question that can't be answered, but <laughs> just had an election a few days ago. Will the ministers even be appointed by August? There hasn't been a date set yet to be sworn in because I talked to the elected official from this riding and he doesn't even know yet when he's going to be sworn in. Yeah, I know he said that, yeah. <laughs> You've been there. <laughs> Councilor Gatwer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, they were meeting to discuss this very matter of ministers, and I believe by August, it's late, AMO in August this year, so I would definitely think they'd have them appointed sometime in July. So I, I will move the number five if we uh, don't have a mover. Okay, do we have a seconder? Councillor Miller. Anybody like to speak to it? Councillor Pierce, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm definitely in support of this because if we wait to see what they're going to do or not going to do, then we won't get them in in time. So we put this recommendation in. If they're there, they're there. If they're not, they're not. We're not standing on the sidewalk, right? We're there. Let's approve it. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions or comments? Put the question all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. CD 1857, relocation of school crossing, Oakland School, I'm sorry, Oakland Scotland Public School. There is a recommendation. Councillor Gatward. I move. And Councillor Miller. Questions? Councillor Pierce, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you. So, okay, I understand we're going to move it from the, the crossing guard to the crosswalk that's in front of the school. I can appreciate that. But what happens to the crossing where the crosswalk, where, where the, the, the guard was? Mr. Bergeron? Thank you, sir. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, so that cross crossing is going to be eliminated. That crossing guard is actually going to move to the front of the school where it's going to service more children. Um, we did commission uh, a study of the area, which included both um, crosswalks, and they indicated that the through a gap study that there was um, enough gaps in time um, for children to cross the church and Simcoe Street area safely. So it was looked at. Thank you, sir. Councillor Pierce. Thank you, Mr. So just, I, I just want to understand this here. The crossing guard is being moved, but the crosswalk itself will still be there. From, from what I understand, the lines will still be painted as a crosswalk. There's still going to be some signage. Um, they've also made some recommendation into adding some additional signage, trimming back some trees, which has been forwarded to Public Works. Okay, thank Any you. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Bergeron. There's a motion on the floor. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Thank you. General Manager's update. Thank you, Ms. Stevenson. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, staff have finalized a list of contractors eligible to bid on the OPP detachment project. The tender is on track to be released in July and staff will call a detachment committee meeting in August to award the tender and review some design information. Staff are also arranging to call the investments committee in late June or July to review a new investor standard and investment returns. Uh, staff are making arrangements to have a temporary office location in Onondaga at the Onondaga Hall starting in July. And the staff service recognition event is coming up this Thursday, June the 14th at 3 p.m. In absence of the chair, as vice chair, I'll, I'll say thank you very much, Cindy, for that report. Is there any questions of Cindy? No questions? 
Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to operations, CD uh, 1847, subsidized transportation contract. There is a recommendation there. Mayor Eddy, seconder, please. Second. Councillor Wheat. Any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Development services, general manager's update, please. Thank you, Mr. Pomponi. Uh, three, Mr. Chair. Uh, three things since last meeting. Uh, just a reminder that Lori Fox started today. She's our okay. lock grading uh, technologist. Uh, I think the timing is actually really good. We've come across a couple of sites where there's been some grading and filling issues that she's going to be diving into. We are uh, planning on bringing the bylaw uh, for the site alteration bylaw for the June meeting of council. So at the end of the month, it's a couple of weeks away. We're expecting that once Lori gets into the uh, uh, nitty gritty of it all that she's probably going to be coming back with further amendments to the bylaw to fine tune it and to improve processes. So uh, the other thing I'd like to say is that on um, interviews are going to be starting next week, I believe, for the plans examiner for the building division. Um, we have a couple candidates coming in. Um, also, uh, this week we're doing a job preview, I believe, on Wednesday for the development engineering reviewer position which was vacated by a staff member who left a few months ago. Uh, and we'll see what comes out of that. If uh, it all goes well, we'll come back, hopefully, with an announcement of a new staff position. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Pomponi. Any questions? Thank you again, sir. Thank you. Um, economic development, strategic investment. There is a uh, recommendation, CD 1861, St. George United Church parking lease. There is a recommendation. Councillor Wheat, Mayor Eddy. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, carried. General Manager's update, please. Thank you, Ms. Newton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just a couple of quick updates. Um, a lot of you may have seen uh, the story in the expositor about um, the Saxon operation line of, of at the Adidas plant that's going to be closing down um, by the end of the year. I um, wanted to let everyone know that we are working with the ministry and with the company directly. Some of those jobs will be absorbed back into the company with um, some new manufacturing that they're going to be putting out. And we will be doing um, a sort of reverse job fair with the, with the staff that may be displaced and hopefully keep them uh, within the county and uh, working at another operation. So we'll keep you posted on how that's going. Uh, secondly, uh, we will be setting up one-on-one um, -on -one interviews throughout the summer for the economic development strategy. Um, certainly uh, the consultants will want to um, have a telephone interview with the mayor and I'd be looking for uh, one or two other councillors who may be interested. You don't have to tell me right now but I will be putting that out to send it out um, to get those set up over the summer and then that will be prior to our broader focus group that will start uh, in September. That's all I have. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Newton? Councillor Gatward, please. Um, just a note about when I was reading in the minutes about the economic development strategy, it's, it stated that they were going to redo the strategy. Would another word be update? Or was it a total redo? you mr. chair the previous economic development strategy that was done in 2010 will be reviewed as background um, documentation and review but it will not be a, a renewal of that strategy that was done this will be sort of starting um, like I said from sort of from scratch but with that as as a background documentation for review Thank you. any other questions thank you very much uh, moving along, we have uh, our new CAO's first update. Mr. Bradley, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's a lot of pressure to give me. Um, so I'll... I'll, just, I'll just, just one second. That's not three pages, I hope. It's almost. <laughs> so first thing I'll update is on our fire communication system. We had some discussion about this 
uh, at Community Services Committee, and I think as uh, most of, uh, of, of Corporate Development Committee is aware, we have brought on a new fire communication system to replace an outdated and, uh, and a system that was not performing. Uh, the, the, the new system has had some problems, and I think uh, you, 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 some of you may have heard about these problems, and some of you heard about them at Community Services Committee. So uh, as an update, the uh, radios, as it's, a, it's, a, it's a combined tool. It has a pager and a radio in it. The radios are working fine at this point. Uh, the pagers are still experiencing some problems. Um, so we've identified what the problem areas are. Some of them are the settings on the pager itself, and those are mostly corrected at this point. Um, the odd one's still cropping up. Some of them are just user training issues. Any new piece of technology is going to have challenges with, the, with, with new users. Right. We're all guilty. We're, we, all, we all face this in our technological world. Most of those are under control as well. At this point, we do have some also some reception gaps, and these are the bigger problems. We've got a reception gap in St. George and a reception gap in Scotland. So the St. George, we have a solution about putting a new device on the water tower, which should show up that gap quite nicely, and that's being implemented. Uh, the Scot Scotland solution is still being developed. We are uh, looking at different uh, tower um, tower options in Scotland, but, but we will expedite that as soon as possible. So, uh, The system, we, we do have redundancies. We, we acknowledge that n n none of those tools will always function perfectly at any given time. That's why we have redundancies in the system. But at this point, I think we're, we are very confident that things are coming together nicely. The, the deputy chief is communicating regularly with the, uh, with the district chiefs. Uh, and uh, I believe their, uh, their approach to this is, is working quite well. So I will continue to update you on this uh, um, as, 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 our, as our, our situation evolves and, and hopefully solves itself. So. Um, BME has a board meeting on Wednesday and uh, quite a bit of business uh, going on there. A few projects that are associated with BME, the Penman's Dam project. We had divers on the site last week. They did dive and they did a full review of the structure of the dam and collected all the information they need at this point to complete the condition assessment that uh, that committee has approved for that that structure so we're optimistic that that conditional assessment will be in our hands in, in July so as well the Scotland Community Center the uh, solar project uh, is is underway I believe they started last week it's probably a short project it's a, it's a, I think it's a 140 kilowatt system so it'll be done in a couple of weeks and we would hope to be connected have that system connected in July so. um, the fire halls the the that that the Pardon me. That process is well underway. Uh, site plan control application, uh, working drawings, and tenders are all underway, uh, being prepared as we speak, and uh, the tender should be called with our uh, shortly with our intent to have uh, be in the ground uh, this fall, as we originally said. Uh, something I've been working on for a while with the city is a, is a, is a governance and cost sharing agreement for our paramedic service. This is one of the suite of the cost sharing agreements that we committed with the city last year to reviewing. The John Old Home was the first agreement, which we, uh, we, went, uh, we, we, we got approved last fall. And uh, we now have a draft agreement that both staff parties are agreed with and we'll be taking them concurrently through the two councils next month. So you'll be seeing that agreement come to, to Corporate Development Committee in July, and city council, uh, city's, the city's general committee will see it at the same time. So uh, we're satisfied. We think it's a, it's a good ag agreement that will carry our paramedic service forward as a shared service. Um, the express request for expressions of interest for the Community Health Hub uh, is open. We have had a, a number of parties. Uh, um, uh, take take the document, register for the document. We have extended the closing date. It was supposed to extend uh, close last week, but uh, given how many people were continuing to take it, um, we we have extended it. So we're optimistic we're going to get a very response, very good response from that. Uh, that's my update. The last thing I just wanted to mention is Robin Hewitt. Uh, she she had had a couple surgeries, and I I uh, was texting back and forth with her today. She is on the mend. She's feeling ill. Uh, she had another surgery uh, last Thursday, I believe, but she says she is on the mend and uh, and and and. Um, we, we wish her well, so just thought I would pass that along. That's my report, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. Any questions? Councillor Pierce, then Councillor Powell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, um, so you've extended it until? Yep. Sure, we extended it two weeks, so, yes. so it'll, it'll close uh, next Friday. Okay, so, and, and that's all fine and dandy, but I'm just curious as to if you had a number of them come in, why would you extend it? Uh, certainly, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you, so so because this isn't really a tender. I mean, we're act, we're trying to get the best set of parties we can, right. the best set of. So we, we want to keep it out there as long as we can, with with the understanding that we also want to close it down and make our selections. So um, it's a hard. I mean, it's not like a tender where we release it and there's a number of companies waiting for these kind of things. That we're reaching out to 
agencies hoping to look for a home. So it's harder to reach out to them. So, you know, our, our, our premise is that the word of mouth, the buzz, uh, got that, got notice of that document out into the healthcare community and interested parties started coming forward. But it took several, you know, the two or three weeks to get, you know, that, that document out to people. So we felt it was appropriate to extend it. And okay. uh, Very good. I would hope that by then I, we won't see too many more plan, uh, people taking the, the yeah. package and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see a good set of expressions come in next Friday. So. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Powell and Councillor Godward, please. Michael, with the number of new hirings, do we have workspace for all these new people? Th through you, Mr. Jerry. Currently, we do. Um, we are running out of space. I think we've talked about that in the past. We do have a. We are batting around a few options uh, for short-term space as well as long-term space. So our intent is to continue to kind of uh, work our way through that and then bring a report forward um, to 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 council that would lay out a short-term plan for space needs and a longer-term plan. So you'll see that in the next few months. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Gottward, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, through you to um, our new CAO. The uh, mention about the gap in the um, service for the Scotland station. Um, have they looked at the wireless tower that our IT people erected at 3 King Street North in Oakland? Mr. Chair, I can't comment on whether they've specifically looked at that tower. They're looking at all towers. There's a, I heard today, there's a bell tower. There's a, there's a couple of silos. So, so they're looking at different, different options. And actually, actually Mr. Mr. Noble with BME is going to help us out with that. He's pretty connected to yeah. that world. So, yeah. yeah. The one in um, Three King Street North is just down the road in Oakland. And that was to connect with the Burford wireless for, for IT. So. If it connects with Burford, I would think it should be able to connect with Scotland, but I'm no expert. I just wanted to mention that tower, and I don't know how high it is, but thank you. They do have, uh, I spoke to the chief on Friday when I stopped in to see him for a minute, and he did tell me and made me aware there are technical experts on board doing this, so they really are uh, jamming to get this done. So they are looking at the best positions for them. Any other questions for the CAO? Mr. Bradley, thank you very much. Um, we do have one bit of communications, 10A. How would the committee like to deal with that? Steve? Councillor Gatward? I looked at their request and read their um, request. And I think that this is a very worthwhile um, project um, they were suggesting an ad in their uh, magazine and I don't know what the cost of that is um, but I would move that staff investigate the cost of the request and report back at, at council Thank you. Any, do we have a seconder, please? I think it's a Councillor Powell. Worthwhile cause. We have a motion on the floor. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, could we have a motion to go in? Uh, sorry, matters referred by council. There is none. Other business? I don't see any. Could we have a motion to go on camera, please? Councillor Wheat? No other business, sir. I haven't seen any. Do you have any, sir? No. Anyone else? Thank you. Seconder to go in camera, please. Councillor Pierce, all in favor? Thank you. Two minutes. Two minutes. Thank you for spending the evening. Okay, turn me off. 